Welcome to the Manor Born. Join us on our journey as we bring this wonderful manor back to life and as we experience life here in France. Next on our list is to build the shelter that goes over this wood. As you can see, we put some tarpaulin over it. The wind's blowing it off. Um, we've got to sort this out. It's already autumn. Um, it's going to get a lot wetter. We need to keep this wood dry. So we popped in the car, went to the local bricolage, and we got all the resource we need. And just like every other time I try and do any work outside, it poured with rain. To save us money and to also save us having to move all of the logs out of the way, we're going to simply put a batten on the back wall and then build the roof off of it. We don't really need to put any uprights here anyway because the wall is pretty solid. There are a couple of small issues that I overcame, um, mainly the fact that the wall goes downhill and leans slightly backwards, but the batten managed to go on reasonably okay in the end. You can see me here trying to use a spirit level to get the piece of wood straight. Um, it just looks very, very odd against the wall, which clearly isn't straight. The first step is done. The back beam that's going to hold the uh, roofing is in place. That uh, took a lot longer than I wanted it to because my draw gave up halfway through. But uh, anyway, we've done it. Uh, believe it or not, if you can see it, it comes on the camera. The, the wood is straight. The wall is not, but that doesn't surprise me say my draw could put i mean seriously this used to be attached to that luckily our lovely french farmer friend managed to lend us uh, one of his big drills and i was able to continue with the job with the hole successfully drilled i'm now going to put these um concrete bolts in uh, the, the plan is you, you hammer them into the ground and then when you screw it up this little sort of sleeve here tightens around the concrete So I've got the two uprights in place and the back batten. All I've got to do now is put the front batten on. I'm adding these metal brackets to hold the roof struts up. Um, they're just slightly bent out of 90 degrees, which helps us with the incline of the roof to ensure that the rain falls forward. <laughs> To keep the front of the new lean-to straight and square to the house, I've had to cut each individual roof bracket slightly odd because of the way that the wall angles away from the property. Sadly, we didn't realise this when I cut some of them in the first place, but we managed to solve it in the end. The roof went on pretty easily, but what we didn't realise, this was the beginning of the storm that was coming across the earth. And so uh, we had to work pretty fast to keep the roof down, otherwise we would have lost all of our good work. And you'll see here I'm wearing a red glove on one hand, that's because I had a slight accident with my thumb. I uh, fell and sliced it on some metal and made holding screws very, very hard. Okay, that do. So the legs are on, the roof is up, it's not uh, nailed in place yet. We had a bit of an issue because I didn't calculate how many bits of wood I needed on the top, but hey, it doesn't matter, done that now. Um, all we've got to do is, there's a gap at the back, obviously, we've got to put roofing along there. I've got to cut a panel into three sections, put it on there, and then nail all the roofing on, and then tidy up the sides by putting some lovely quarter angles there. It's a bit wet. The roofing is sheet metal and uh, it was easier to put a few pilot holes into the metal before hammering into the wood.
And then finally we put a tarpaulin across the front. Um, it needs to be a tarpaulin so it can be lifted up and down and we can keep the air flowing through the wood as it dries. So we can't put on a full solid front or a door. And here it is. So we put the um, tarp on the front just to stop any pervading wind, but the idea is that we can roll that up and down. Um, I've just put a couple of bricks on the bottom because it is um, quite windy today. Obviously, we've still got plenty of air going inside. That's important uh, to keep the logs from, from rusting. Um, but considering I never made any sort of shelter before, that's not too bad. Well, the rain simply got to us yesterday. It was absolutely soaking out here um, and we were wet through. So we're back out here this morning to finish off the log pile. Um, the temporary tarpaulin we put over um, during the night blown over, but uh, it's sort of what I expected. It was only held on with some, some stones at the bottom. But the majority of the wood is dry and drying. So the job um, is, is almost complete. So the plan this morning is to sort this area out. Um, you can see where I planted the buddleias. This is going to be sort of like a, a hedge area. We put um, some other plants up there. This would be the, the, the dirty area of the garden, as it were. Hopefully eventually it'll be shielded. Um, but we're going to clear up, get rid of all these weeds today, and then tidy up this area here where the old oak tree used to be. Then we're going to put two compost bins. We're not going to use them for compost, but we are going to use them for leaves, because if you look across the lawn here, um, we, we have a huge amount of leaves coming down and I want to make some nice leaf mould um, for the next couple of years. So that's our jobs today. I'm also going to finish off the front of this, obviously. And whilst I finished the front of the log pile, Jules started work on tidying up the logs that we've left over from the bay and the oak tree, um, where we've just added bits of wood and other stuff that's happened uh, throughout the summer. It needs a good old tidy up and also properly covering now that the winter is here. So these are the bits and pieces that make um, compost bins. They were left in the house when we first got here, but we didn't want compost because we weren't here regularly enough. And when we did have a little bit in at one point, we came back and it absolutely stunk one summer. So we compost bins are both up. Um, I appear to have lost the lid of, of this first one. I've got to find that. That must be in the garage somewhere, but I, I can't see anywhere at the moment. But at least they're up. The area is much, much tidier. You can see they're obviously a little bit too many flames, but um, not allowed to compost. So not allowed a bonfire at this time of year where we are, because we're in the middle of a farming community. But I can have a weed incinerator. I need to go and sort out those flames in a second. But the area is looking much, much better now. Last job, and that is to put some sort of cupinol or wood preservative on all the wood. But uh, at the moment, that'll do. The sun is out and the rain has stopped, which means I can get outside, open up the log pile to get some air through to it and chop some wood for this evening's fire. And the really good news is the storm came whipping through the village, trees came down um, and everything was a mess, but the shelter for the log pile survived the storm. So just a short video this week, but it's been certainly a very busy week trying to put the shelter up. We'll leave you with these few pictures of the shelter itself.